and we are live hello america hello <laughs> uk <laughs> <laughs> uh like i said it's Good it's night, two minutes before one minute before now here we got two people in so they should be starting to roll in here in a minute and we'll just head off and ask some questions you feeling okay buddy I'm feeling okay at the moment. I'm still struggling, so if I start to cough, you have to bear with me because I am getting over an illness at the moment. Oh, you're you're fine, brother. We're me and you both be dueling coughs because I'll be doing it too. <laughs> I'm I'm just getting over a partial collapsed lung, so. Oh, that's terrible. And uh, my other half had me working nonstop all day today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Annie B. <laughs> Hello, Annie, Annie B. B. Mary. Uh, Mary. Autism Magnet Fishing Mary. Heavy that, metal. Is that scary, Mary? Yeah. 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 Towpath. Hello, Andrew. Hello, everybody. Welcome. They're they're popping in here now. It just takes them a little while. Like I said, I don't I, I don't know how many people will be here. I, I advertise all over Facebook. You know how I do. I, I'll hit every group and I'll get banned for four or five hours and then I'll go back and do it again. <laughs> uh, that's how we all started, George. <laughs> yeah. I used to post in well over 150 groups and I was constantly getting uh, banned. Yeah, yeah, and I that's that's how i did too and uh but now i had like three or four shorts we had to put out last night and uh, then we had the main video this today plus uh advertising this live so i got banned several times <laughs> <laughs> funny how they do things uh excuse uh steve and myself uh we're both coffers today we are steve steve is getting over a, a collapsed lung and from an illness and shannon and i are getting over the covid there's some horrible bugs about at the moment oh my gosh it's terrible one of these days one of them's gonna wipe us out yeah shannon said one of these days that's gonna wipe us all out one of these bugs <laughs> i think that's what the governments are trying ah so you're, you're you're a fellow believer like myself oh absolutely i think the government's got a hand in all of this yeah i do too uh well, let's see what we got in here. we got uh seven people am i echoing yeah i don't know why i don't know why i'm echoing maybe this fellow got that let me open it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, Cape Cod is in the house. Cape Cod Magna Crew. Hello, Cape Good Cod. Deal. Another big supporter of the Peakies. Yes, sir. Uh, everybody loves the Peakies. We, uh, let me think about this a minute now. I think, uh, well, first off, let me ask you this question. Uh, you was uh, rusty, rusty nuts magnet fishing. I was, yes, for the longest time. And you was with uh, you was with Northwest for a while, right? No, I wasn't with the Northwest. I was on my own. But you I, was on your own. But, but you but you went out with the Northwest a few times, right? Yeah, we met up with the Northwest a few times, but it was more North Ants magnet fishing that we used to fish with in the Peakies. Um, right because we all used to fish together more or less every weekend and we became the outcast family. It was, getting, right. it was getting kind of difficult putting three separate videos out for three different channels, all in the same location. And because I was uh, really, really good close friends with Glenn and Marie at the Peaky Dippers, it just made sense that it came to a point where it was easier to shut my channel down. And I approached Glenn and Marie and said, how do you fancy having another Peaky? And they were over the moon, so it, it just fitted in. It just made sense to shut down the rusty nut side of things and become rusty peaky. Well, absolutely, yeah. I mean, if it 
if it makes sense, it makes sense. Uh, I know that uh, we started uh, following you is right, right about the same time we started magnet fishing. We saw, well, we saw one person in America that was a, it was actually a paranormal channel that uh, a fake paranormal channel that was going out and uh, they also did some magnet fishing, but they, uh, <laughs> it was so obvious that they staged their magnet fishing just like they staged their paranormal but i saw it and i was like man that's that looks pretty cool then i we saw you and steve harrison and uh from blackpool yeah. and uh, ds and nigel uh and peaky's and we we saw all you guys and i was like wow we can do that well, that's the and, one that we've always been blessed with over this side of the water. I'm not saying it happens over your side, but I know it does happen in certain places where uh, certain videos can be staged. But over here, we, we've got so much uh, quantity in our waterways over here that there's never, ever been a need to um, stage a video. There's, you're always guaranteed a video no matter what because of the amount of uh, rubbish in our waterways but yeah with the peakies now we've we've gone away from the um quantity side of things and the big cleanups and we've concentrated solely on the history side of things because our waterways are full of history it's incredible oh yeah i mean with so many so many wars uh going back through the the, the years and the decades and centuries i mean uh yeah i mean i'm 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 jealous shannon and i are jealous we we would love to be in the uk and not just for the fishing it's you know for the for the company uh yeah. for the people you know uh, oh, we've met some incredible people along the way i mean i've i've been blessed to have been uh magnet fishing over in this country now for a good seven years and i I can't say is there's many people out there that I haven't actually met and fished with in this country, uh, whether it be through uh, the charity collaborations we helped organise or through just general meetups. We've met some fantastic people along the way. Uh, now I mentioned I mentioned staging staging videos, and I I'm not saying anybody does it uh i was just talking about this one fake paranormal channel that that stages their paranormal side and they were and they were staging they were obviously staging their uh, uh magnet fishing side i you know i have no, I have no idea if anybody stages their magnet fishing videos don't care it's none of my business uh that's on them uh but i know i know that there's people that stage their youtube videos i've seen it all over youtube not not in the magnet fishing community to say oh, but absolutely all, over. It happens all the time and one of the things i totally disagree with with youtube is uh you get a lot of these um state these channels that do stage that go out and buy views and buy subscribe subscribers and things like that and i don't believe in none of that to me if you're going to do it do it the proper way and earn, earn your credits yeah i mean what what is the purpose behind i mean i can i can never figure out buying views and buying subs it, it never has made sense to me and i've been a big proponent against it as you've seen i, I posted you well, it you might as well just hang up your magnets and forget it because if you yeah. have to go down that route then uh, you're just wasting your time and you're wasting other people's time to be honest yeah I mean, absolutely to say we've got so much quantity and so much history in our waterways, <laughs> there'll be times where we go out and we, we can't find it. You're not guaranteed to find it every weekend. I mean, we put some serious hours in as the peak is. Yeah, and absolutely. You're not always guaranteed to find it, but you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Sometimes we'll put a video out there that we personally think isn't going to do very well yeah yeah uh barry says hi to me and you and Hello, shannon barry. What barry said, uh steve's nuts were so rusty they fell off <laughs> mary said uh steve's nuts were so rusty they fell off oh and it's barry started on me already already <laughs> uh Kier kirsty's in the house who is Kier kirsty kirsty peaky dippers, kirsty, peaky dippers. 
Okay. And then, yeah. Hello. And there's, and there's the piggy dippers themselves. They're coming to bug me, are they? <laughs> they're coming back. To, yeah, they're checking up on you, brother. They're checking up on you. Uh, Topaz oh. says you're not going Topaz says you're not guaranteed to find anything in the Southwest UK. Magnetic that's rock is mainly what, what they find. That's it. I mean, we're, we're blessed that we've got so many in the Peaky Dippers now. And we all have a hand in doing uh, different aspects to the channel, re researching the areas, locations more than anything. And uh, we're, look, we're fortunate that Kirsty and Michael are absolute animals when it comes to uh, researching locations. But we can pick a, a location that's got the most incredible history and we'll go out and fish it for eight to ten hours and not find anything. Sometimes this happens. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, well, yesterday, uh, right after I talked to you uh, yesterday, we went out to do some metal detecting and magnet fishing. We got almost six hours out there and we had like 13 minutes of uh content <laughs> six that's hours of work that's 13 minutes YouTubing is, youtubing is very very difficult no marie yes yes it is it's it's very very difficult I mean, uh, and we're fortunate that we've got such as marie who does all our editing and puts our videos together people don't realize the hours that are put in behind the scenes to put a video together and Marie does a phenomenal job. And yeah. she, over the last yeah. year, she's really stepped the game up and she's really knocking it out of the park for the Peaky Dippers now. But she she really does. She really does. Uh, Shana, spend upwards of 40 hours edit, editing a video. And that, that's, oh, like, yeah. that's like a full time job. Yeah. I mean, especially, I mean, uh, you know, we go out two, sometimes three times a week. And, uh, so okay. Sh Shannon is always uh, editing something. Yeah, you know, it's and I, really I couldn't is. do it. I, I I I just can't do it. I I can't I can't concentrate long enough. I got too many issues with my head going on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but no, that's yeah, hard to make work. work in YouTube now for <coughs> for what we do, which is classed as an obscure hobby. It's uh, very difficult to make yourself stand out from the rest and really progress your channel. And with the route we've gone down and the way the Peaky Dippers have evolved over the last two or three years now, it's really starting to pay off for us. Um, I know we was all part of the outcast and that, but we've, we've separated and gone our own ways. And Peakies are just, we're just knocking it out of the park at the moment. But it's yeah. all down to our subscribers at the end of the day we'll always be humble we'll always stay humble because we're nobody without our subscribers and if you look after subscribers the subscribers will always look after you as as you guys have you've always supported me right from day one yeah and we always will i mean uh and uh we find somebody we like and we, we, we like find we find some <laughs> <laughs> shannon said we find somebody that we that we really like and uh we just latch on to them like a leech. Well, and we've, we've got oh, some incredibly loyal subscribers. We really have. And like I say, the, the joy about YouTube is you stay humble. We get people turning up on, on location when we turn up to an area. And they treat us like superstars. I'm sorry, I'm only a school, a school caretaker. I'm nobody, me. The fact that they see us and they, they think we're TV celebrities and we're not, and that, it takes some getting used to. So you've always got to stay grounded and stay humble. Yeah, uh, and well, I mean, we we fish this one spot. I mean, it and we we've, we've done it for three, a little over three years now. We have not had to leave this one area. We got twelve miles. We got twelve miles of river. We'll never get it done because it's just the two of us. And I mean, but people are, are recognizing us. Uh, we've had people recognize us from YouTube here. I mean, and I mean, you know, we've got eleven hundred subscribers. But you guys, I know, are I'm not sure exactly how many subs y'all got, but 
when we've, I mean we've just tipped the twelve thousand subscribers now, which is for an obscure hobby is absolutely incredible. That's amazing. That's amazing. It really is. Uh, it is. It's I mean, it's, over here, it's I don't know why it works the way it does with YouTube, but in America, um, they can get subscribers so easy. Over here, we can put out the most incredible historical videos and really, really have to work so hard for our subscribers. It's, it's very difficult over here. Well, tell me where that is in the U.S. You can get subscribers easily because we sure as hell haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you get some people like Outdoors Weekly and things like that, people like that. And yeah, for some I know reason, what you mean. I mean, they just get bombarded with subscribers. I, I know what you mean. And then and, and I don't want to sound, I'm, I mean, I'm not bitter or sending out sour grapes. But like you guys and, and everybody in the UK and most people that I know, uh, we have we we have to work. We have to put the work in to get this all, you know. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, there are people out there that that can. They just have that liability about them, and uh, that seems to work for them. I mean, fair play to them. I'm not knocking them or anything like that. No. No, I'm not either. I'm not knocking them either. But there's, I mean, there's some of that can just, they can just fart and they'll have, you know, a <laughs> uh, hundred subs. I mean, one of my, one of my favorites, um, I constantly watch him all the time, is Jared Lysick from uh, Adventures with Purpose. I'm addicted to his ones at the moment. I think, I think he's brilliant, but it's something completely different to the rest. So he stands out. Right, and I, I I understand that. Let's see, we're we're just like and just like you guys, we're uh, experimenting. We're doing different different things now too. Uh, we just started the metal detecting, and boy, we fell in love with it too. And uh, well, again, uh, with the Peaky Dippers, we because we're a group now. We've evolved into a group. We all have our own specific likes. I mean. When it comes to metal detecting, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm not. I'm not into metal detecting. I, I I find it so incredibly boring personally. But give me a magnet or let me go mudlarking. Absolutely love it. But then yeah. you've got Glenn. Glenn. Glenn loves to metal detect. He loves to bottle dig. He loves to magnet fish. He loves to mudlark. Kirsty and Mike, avid, absolute avid mudlarkers as well as magnet fishers. So we all have that different thing in the group. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that makes sense. And it, it makes you more diverse and, and that, that, in, that itself will make, you know, you have more subs. Uh, but we, we started the uh, magnet, I mean the uh, metal detecting, but magnet fishing is our first love. It's, it's always going to be yeah. no matter what. And I mean, but we kind of evolved into, I don't know if you've uh, seen it or not, but I've been Shannon and I both get in the water with our waders on. I'm set on a setting in a walker in the water. <laughs> and uh, now this, this year we've uh, made our own stick magnets. We're going to be uh, a stick magnet. I don't know what magnet <laughs> fishing, I guess, uh, in the water. Again, and uh, Again, as the Peaky Dip, is that something that we've started last year and we're going to be doing a lot more of that through the summer as well? Is we've we've um, got the magnets on poles. We've also got uh, we, we've invested a lot back into the channel as well, like uh, Nigel Perry, that Mr. Fox, he's invested in a, an underwater drone. Uh, we've oh. got the aerial drone. We've got two boats now, so we are we, we are putting a lot more back into the channel. And we are going to open the channel up. We are going to, uh, we've already started opening it up with uh, Mudlarking. We've met up, we've had the pleasure of meeting up with uh, Nicola White and Sci Fines over here, two big names. And they're like yeah. family, of course. They're absolutely lovely people. Yeah. And boy, the, the, the uh, at Sci Fines, I, I, watch, I watch him quite, quite often. And, uh, uh, Nicola White, like he's talking about, uh, they find some amazing stuff. 
what they're doing. They've both been doing what they're doing for years. And actually, it was I believe it was Cy Fines that started before Nicola, but Nicola's overtaken Cy on subs. But they're, they're both so, such grounded, down-to-earth people to meet them and to actually spend time with them. They're, they're fantastic people. They really are. And we've had the joy of having the pair of them come magnet fish with us. And we've been down to the Thames and done mudlarking with them. And there's there's more to come with them. Yeah. Uh, Kingfisher says uh, he's got an hour and a half drive from location with the Mad family. Uh, oh, he's been out with the Mads, has he? Yeah. Uh, Glenn said hello. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm uh, the chat's flying past me, and and uh, I'm talking to you, and I, I I can't do two things at once, Steve. Gerd's <laughs> uh, in the house, evidently. Gerd's always in the house. Hello, Gerd. Yeah, Gerd, man, I tell you what, Gerd is a supporter of everybody. I, you don't meet people, many people like, like Gerd. She she supports everybody and she is on everybody's live and she you know she's just amazing. She as all as all, all, all of them. When I started out as uh, Rusty Nuts, she was one of my first subscribers and it was lovely to actually get to meet Gerd as well at one of the collabs with we did recently she uh, actually managed to come over from norway and come and meet everybody and that what that was really nice to get to finally meet gerd yeah i i, I remember that collab uh, that she was at and uh, everybody meeting her uh i told her to get a plane ticket to come over here uh we'd see her in nashville we got it we got a collab in nashville uh this year in may that we're going to uh Oh, you're attending that one, are you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be there. Definitely be there. Uh, we already got our hotel booked. Oh, and, and, also, and, and, what, and what's funny, Steve, is uh, our hotel is nine miles away from the collab. And right there at our hotel, we've got uh, streams and creeks we can magnify. When we get done at the collab, we can go back to the hotel and do the same thing. Nice. That's where I like so, to eat. Yeah, man, I, I I don't know what it is about, about the magnet fishing that that just hooked us, but man, it just hooked us hard and uh, love nothing more than just be out magnet fishing. I mean, we do other stuff too, but the magnet fishing is 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 first love. And oh, absolutely. I mean, you just never ever know what's going to come out next. That's the joy of it over here. Because, like I say, we've got quantity. Our waterways. I mean, Glenn and Marie, they live in uh, the Birmingham area. Now, Birmingham's got the largest network of canal systems, more so than Venice, right on the doorsteps. And unfortunately, there's a certain race of people that are prone to, they'll put anything and everything in waterways. And Birmingham canals are just, oh, they're vile. Some of them are just disgusting. And we... We've stepped away from the canal side of it now, and we're we're more into the rivers now because the rivers hold the the better history. Yeah, yeah, I could I could see that, and you're right about the Birmingham waters, man. My gosh, I I've seen several videos there in the Birmingham area, and uh, it's coming up. Everything's coming up black, gone, oh, just black. It's like tar. I've never seen, it really is. I've never seen anything like it. When I first started fishing with the peak, is uh, we was hitting the canals of Birmingham all the time, and don't get me wrong, there is some fantastic history that has come out of some of them. But the the Birmingham waterways, the, the, when you get to the bottom level of the canal systems, it's just full of plastic, and that plastic just rots down, and it's like black tar underneath, and it stinks. <laughs> yeah. Now over here in the springtime, uh, and. Uh, just right like right after winter you start you you pull up leaves and everything where it's where it's all rot, where it's all rotted and, and uh, everything and it just it 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 turns black and brackish for us too uh most yeah. time our water most time our water is brown or green but there's certain times of year it turns kind of a brackish black color Nothing wrong with Brummy or Black Country Canal. Uh, Kirsty uh, from Peaky Dipper said, "Nothing wrong with Brummy or Blackwater Canals." 
No, like I say, um, I, I, when I first started fishing with Len and Marie, it was the attraction of the uh, the Birmingham canals that got me going down there regular, and it just made sense to join them in the end because I was just spending every weekend with them. And like I say, the channel's evolved. We've now got Kirsty and Mike. Fox has always been a part of the Peakies anyway, and thankfully yeah. Len and Marie have just allowed my partner now, Alison, to, jo- to become a full-time Peaky as well, and we're just an incredible family now. The bond that we've all got is just so incredible. You, you, you can't believe it. It's we are more family than our own family. Okay, I I realized something as soon as you said that. Allison Plant is is my other half. Your other half. <laughs> that, that, see, that's how I, my mind doesn't work quite right, Steve. I, I wasn't putting, I wasn't putting two and two together, and uh, I think she just uh, joined Real Deal Magnet Fishing page recently. Right. Or or she became my friends on Minus Shannon's friend on Facebook. One of the two, and and I couldn't I couldn't put two and two together because I kept seeing her name on the post. And I was like, I know that name from somewhere. <laughs> but I, could, I just couldn't put it together. She's been stalking me for years. <laughs> no, it's understandable, Steve. You're a handsome man. I'm actually quite a, um, a private sort of person, so uh, we, we have been uh, seeing each other for some time now, and she's literally just moved in with me now. So, But we don't tend to put much out there. Well, Alison does, but I don't, because I'm, I'm quite a private person, apart from uh, being on YouTube with Peaky's. Yeah, well, that's un- that's understandable. I mean, I'm uh, I'm not quite as I guess I'm private in my own way. Shannon is more private than I am. Uh, I don't well, but I don't I don't I don't tell my business on on Facebook. Let's put it like that. Now the I only can, time you'll see me ranting and raving is uh, I'm one of these that likes to be the voice for the. For the those that won't speak out for themselves, and uh, I'm, I've been known to have my public rant, um, but I do it to protect those that starting out, if you know what I mean. And I, I do. always defend the uh, other people. If I if I know somebody's being done wrong, then I'll always speak out, and I I always have done. But um, yeah, and then, sometimes, it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Well, I'm well, and I'll just I'll just say it. I mean, you had you had our back uh, over some things uh, with a certain couple people, and, and uh, uh, we have had, we've had yours as well, and uh, that's the way it should be. I, I'm not I'm not going to back down from somebody bullying somebody else. No, uh, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. I think it's wrong. There's no need for it. It's unnecessary. Sometimes somebody has to speak up. But yeah, and, and you and I are both alike on on that on that same front there. Uh, but I don't mean to bring this whole conversation down. But I just I just wanted to throw that we'll out there. Always have yours too, Marine. We'll always have we'll always have the Peaky's backs. Believe me. Uh, well. well that's- we- got to look after each other at the end of the day we're all in this together we're all trying to progress our own channels uh some of us want to do well out of youtube some of us do it just for the love and we've just got to watch out for each other at the end of the day the whole point of us do when we did the collabs was to bring the communities together and yes it worked it worked brilliantly on the days but then as soon as the days were over everything fell back to normal and people were slating each other and it's crazy there's no need for it just go out enjoy your hobby make friends and by god have we done that yeah absolutely absolutely uh treasure coast says can't we all just get along <laughs> exactly there is good to be uh, to come out of magnet fishing there's so much good to come out of magnet fishing uh, like i say i've been doing this seven years now and I've been one of the biggest uh, ones for doing it for charity. And 
I've been fortunate enough to help raise, oh gosh, well in excess of around thirty thousand pounds for different charities since I've been doing it. Wow. I mean, Man, that's, that's... that is an absolute blessing. But that is city <coughs> together, and it's incredible what you can do if you build it. They'll come, and they did, and we've done amazing things for charities. Yeah, you are, you guys honestly have. I mean, it, it it's been quite amazing just just to you know see seeing the kind of videos of it and and whatnot the the collabs uh we've seen all that but we there's a lot of stuff y'all do behind the scenes that uh, people don't see as well uh, well that's it i mean at the moment we're currently working with uh, a children's hospice from around the west midlands area about the birmingham area so we are doing bits still at the moment but I mean, I started out just doing little um, little auctions on my uh, Facebook group when, back when I was Rusty Nuts. That's how it all started for me. And yeah. then I got the likes of uh, J.D. Dubber. Everybody knows J.D., John, uh, John Drage. Uh, he used to paint things up for me, and we used to auction them off on over my Facebook group, and that's how it all started out for me. And then, uh, J.D. Dub is an amazing man, isn't he? Oh, he is, yes. He's... he's a lot of what I've helped raise for charity wouldn't have been able to have been done without the help of J.D. Dubber. And a lot of people don't realise this from, from back in the day when I was Rusty Nuts. He was a massive help towards me, helping raise money. <coughs> like yeah. I say, in the seven years I've been doing this, with J people like J.D. on board, I've managed to help raise uh, around the £30,000 for different charities. So, no, that's, that's a lot of money. Uh not to change the subject again, but J Dub is the one that does our stickers for us, and and he's he does amazing work, and I can't thank him enough. I mean, we could, you know, we could get it done here in America, but J Dub, not the quality that J Dub does it, and and the just actually because he's a he's just a one of the friendliest people I've ever met. Well, without actually meeting, but I mean, on you know, over FaceTime or whatnot. Yeah, he's just about. He's just an outstanding guy, and I can't thank him enough. There's quite a few outstanding people. Like I say, when you put these collabs together, it brings out the best in certain people, and so the support we've had over the last few years with the big collabs that we've done has just been incredible. From general magnet fishers who aren't even on youtube t turning up to support you and support the day and bring some of their finds to raffle off or auction off and things like that and jd's been doing it right from the very beginning with me he really has and i know such as glenn and marie they started out doing the, the charity work as well they helped organize one of the first uh, british collabs one of the biggest ones over here um and that was uh, with a, a few other magnet fishes who are no longer fishing now, but we've, the Peakies have always been about charity, always. If we can put our fame, if you want to call it that, and our our uh, popularity to good use, then we will do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Peaky Dipper says, unfortunately, JD gets take, took advantage of and yeah. won't uh, ask for payment here in the UK. I see that's that's not right. Uh, that's just, that's just not right. I mean, if if you do a service, you you deserve to be paid for it. And uh, uh, definitely, JD, uh, John did John did some stickers for us recently, and we're paying him at the first of the month. So look look out for the there money, J Dub. If you there is a lot of unsung heroes out there in our in the community. I mean. We've got uh, Tracy, part of the Northwest crew, who does the plaques for everybody. I mean, she, bless her. I've known Tracy a few years now, and she puts her heart and soul into them plaques, and she does them free of charge and posts them out to everybody. I can't say as there isn't a magnet fisher out there that hasn't already got one of Tracy's plaques. So it's just yeah, that's true. The community people like that. They're just brilliant, and you know that they, they really make stand out and make a difference yeah and it's i, I love track we love tracy oh, yeah. 
uh, we, uh, we always have loved Tracy and, and I just wish, I just, I know she, do, she won't do it, but I wish she would get a YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, my God, Tracy finds some, Tracy finds some amazing stuff. Doesn't she? She does. Yeah. Well, she is part of the Northwest crew. Uh, with the right. likes of Daniel Slack, I mean Dan Daniel's been doing it longer than me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they, are, they are a good group, the Northwest crew. Um, yeah, the whole the whole Northwest crew group is is great people. We love them. Uh, I I was sitting here thinking the other day, and I'm I'm not going to single anybody out. Well, I'm gonna single three people out. Oh God! Shannon said, "Oh God!" <laughs> uh, I'm gonna single three people out just because we mentioned them, and that is Tracy, Marie, Uncle Doggy, and my wife Shannon. Are the three hardest working females in magnet fishing, as far as I'm concerned. That's my opinion, and I don't want nobody to take offense to that. But uh, to be honest, there's not many fe uh, females out there now that still uh, still doing it. No, and I would I tell you what I will put those three those three ladies right there. I will put them up against any man out there magnet fishing when it comes to pulling in stuff. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. Shannon pulls in some amazing stuff. A lot of people don't see it or see her pulling stuff in. Because she doesn't like to be on camera that much, yeah. Uh, and uh, when she's pulling in head, when she <laughs> when she's pulling in heavy stuff, she'll have to turn the camera off and and pull the thing up, and it'll be standing. I'm telling you, Shannon you know pulls Mary up some said, heavy stuff. Mary said, "Wait, George, I work very hard to be a smart ass." Mary says admit, she works very hard to be a smart ass. I must admit, our Marie has uh, had a tendency to have a few slips lately, and she's fallen in a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> we say when we put them out. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Shannon Shannon fell in, was it last year? Mm, no, it's been two years ago. Two two years ago, Shannon fell in. Uh she uh fell down a big rocky embankment into the water and uh I had to jump in and and, and pull her out i mean I, I not jump in i had to slide down on my butt and pull her out because she was being drug under uh by uh scary business. yeah I yeah I, I mean i know i famously fell in a few years ago into a canal but i mean that was only up to there and i've never lived that one down but i've had other occasions where i've had a close call and i've seen others have a close call and You've really got to be on your game. You've really got to keep yourself safe out there. Yeah, it's 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 hard. I mean, it, it it that's why. I mean, when we take our grandson with us, uh, he's at you know if 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 we're in a park that is not more than if it's less than six inches deep, he don't have to wear his uh, uh, life jacket but if it's more than six inches deep i'm I'm putting a life jacket on him and he's not you know he's yeah. not well, he's not gonna go and it's just that simple i mean it's dangerous one of I my hate to, one of my biggest hates i've got to admit and it scares the life out of me seeing people do it is when they tied the rope to the wrist or around the waist yeah and i i've I've lost magnets on boats where boats have gone over my magnets, suck the magnet up to the boat and they've just kept going. And, uh, yeah, I'd have had a rope tied around my wrist or whatever. I'd have been head first in the water and I wouldn't stand a chance. And it, it scares the living daylights out of me when I see people on Facebook or YouTube tying the rope around the wrist or around the waist. And please don't do it. Uh, especially up on bridges. Yeah, you know when when the, on the bridges when the boats are coming from both ways, and That's you can't right. tell what's coming behind you can't tell what's coming behind you, and they can't see that little rope uh, hanging hanging down. Yeah. That's the day. That's, the, that's dangerous. One of the funniest ones I've had was uh, no offense. I was actually sat on Nigel's box once, and he had his magnet attached to the box, 
and a boat caught his magnet around the propeller and kept on going. And I, I was just riding along the towpath on his box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, we laugh about yeah. it now, but yeah, if that had been tied around somebody's wrist or whatever, that's what I mean. You, you don't stand a chance. And uh, we're, I've always been a big advocate of uh, people staying safe. Yeah, that. Yeah. No, I I will admit we were guilty of that when we first started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we, so many do it. We were guilty of that when we first started, but we've kind of we learned. kind of learned and figured out. Hey, you that might not quick. be too bright. Might <laughs> <laughs> you know? Especially, and here's another thing: the the magnets that that people have nowadays, the ones that people are using, the three sixties and the big clamp magnets. If you don't weigh, if you don't weigh more than a buck fifty, they'll pull you in. <laughs> the magnet Probably itself will. will pull you in. <laughs> they will definitely. People don't realize they'll wipe your bank cards out. They'll scramble your phone. They'll do all sorts. Of them ones. Oh yeah. Oh, Sophie's, and on Sophie's on here. Oh, Sean, Sean Adventures. Sean Adventures and little Sophie's in here. I forgot oh, to say hello to Sophie. I love little Sophie. I miss her. I do. Yeah. I forgot to say hello to Treasure Coast. I forgot to say hello to Roger. Magnet Mum and Dad are in here. Oh, is Roger on as well? Hello, Mad Family. Stuart Kingfisher's in here. He oh, he left me. I know uh, the Mad Family are soon to be grandparents again. Oh, uh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Once is enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to come yet. Mine's just just about to turn nineteen. Wow. Wow. I'm dreading it. <laughs> I tell you what, your first your first grandchild is a blessing though. Oh my god, we love Ezra so much. Uh my my our grandson <laughs> is the light of our life. He really is. He he keeps us young, that's for sure. Uh you but have to be the, the 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 kids, man, the the, the grandkids are well, just like something else. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> well, speaking of that, uh, let's see here. I'm I am 57. I'll be 58 this year. How how old are you? I'm 54 at the moment. 55 in July. 55 in July. So we're close to the same age. We remember the same stuff. That's right. Uh, a lot of a lot of kids are. Uh, uh, coming up nowadays that that won't have a clue as to what what uh, our generation has seen. Yeah, like the rotary phone and we were Shannon and I were talking about this yesterday because we we I pulled up something yesterday that looked like a old time uh, crank style telephone. Yeah, uh, kids nowadays they they don't have a clue as to what even a rotary phone looks you put like. Them in a room with a rotary phone, they'd be like, what? Yeah, you 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 put you put like Shannon said, you put them in a room with a rotary phone. They'll like, well, how do you text on this? <laughs> Try uh, giving one of the tape cassette and telling them to play it. They haven't got a clue. Yeah, I mean it, it's a, and it's sad. I mean, our generation has seen computers so much come about. I mean, we're we're the generation that saw the computers come about. Yeah, the the cell yeah. phones. Uh, I mean, we, you know, when, when I was a kid, uh, when we, when we finally did get a TV, it was black and white. And it was a console bigger than the house. Yeah. And it weighed more than the house did because it was a big old console. Uh, yeah, I've never really been into computers as such. I'm not a gamer. I've, I've never been into playstations or anything like that. I haven't got a clue. And I brought my daughter up to be pretty much the same, but when it comes to uh, anything else to do with computers, she runs rings around me. I ain't got a clue. I'm a technophobe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As am I. Uh, Shannon. Shannon does pretty well with a computer. Uh, thank God, because I couldn't edit a video if you had me had me at gunpoint. They had his, uh, uh, hello, Dave. There's Sonic in the house. Hi, buddy. Ding ding. Hey, up, Sonic. Sonic, we will see you in Nashville, my brother. Oh, is Sonic going back to America? Uh, 
Yes, yes, he's he's in the May. In uh, at the end of May, uh, him and Ray. Oh, uh, you did a rhyme. I made a rhyme, didn't I? But <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you about Ray. Let me tell you about Ray for a second. Man, he hooked me up with a uh, English breakfast tea, and I have not turned back on it yet. I love me some English breakfast tea. <laughs> I live on tea. I do. I'm a proper what they call a proper Yorkshireman. Although I'm from Lincolnshire. Um, I I I can have twenty cups of tea a day. I'm mad for t me tea. You and me both, brother. I I do I do the same. And and uh, I tell you what's funny is uh, <coughs> we tra we traced uh, our heritage back, our ancestry, and uh, my ancestry takes me back to England and uh, Scotland, and right. Shannon's takes hers back to England and Ireland. All right. Well, I know I know you had a couple of Scots on the other week, didn't you, Paul? And uh, oh, yeah, we did. man, we had so much trouble trying to get get them on. Uh, <laughs> Paul Paul couldn't get on Streamyard. Uh, he, he for some reason I don't know what it was, and then we then uh, we couldn't get YouTube to work as far as sending out a, sending out the link to that. So we ended up on Facebook. Major and brain fart that day. We had a mate. Yeah, we had a major brain fart that day. Uh, we just <laughs> forgot to push. we and forgot to push one one button. And then you got two but, Scots on that you can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had I had Roger on to translate. <laughs> brilliant lads, the GMF crew. Absolute love them to <laughs> all of them. They are brilliant. Yeah, I was up at five o'clock this morning watching them. <laughs> yeah, Mark, he does have a tendency to go live early. Well, y'all are four, four, four or five hours ahead of us. So that would have made about nine or ten our time. I mean, their time. And uh, five o'clock my time. And I'm, I, I've got insomnia so bad. Most of the time, I'm usually up anyway. A bit like that. Me and Kirsty and Mike, them, them lot never go to bed. Yeah. We usually video call every night. Uh, well, every day, every night. And uh, my phone, I'm sure they do it on purpose. They just like to pick my phone all night long. Yeah. Uh, Johnny's Corner's in the house. Hi, Johnny's Corner. Uh, Unfortunately, I can't see any of the comments, so I'm having to rely on yeah, yours. I, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot StreamYard does that. Uh, YouTube has been doing that uh, to us as well lately. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They'll have they'll have the comments from uh, the the people on that come on, and I don't understand it. I mean, well, YouTube makes me crazy anyway. I just <laughs> what doesn't? Yeah, what doesn't? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Shannon says I got a bad disposition sometimes. Very bad. Haven't we all? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just plain old me, and take me or don't. You know, that's all I can. That's all I can say is I'm one of a kind. <laughs> Aren't we all? That's what makes us individual. That's what makes us uh, stand out on YouTube and things like that. So. <laughs> I was going to uh, ask you, did you see Barry Chalk's mind recently? I did, yes. I, I, I know Barry quite well. He's a uh, nice lad, is Barry. Yeah, he and I chat at least once or twice a week by Rusty. video chat. Uh, Barry's done a lot for us that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, we wouldn't have an intro or uh, outro if it wasn't for Barry. Uh, he really he hooks us up really really well and uh but that that find he had man i thought that was pretty pretty interesting i've never i've never seen that before uh, he's, uh, he's hit me up a few times now to um identify certain things for him and, uh, no, yeah and that's what i was going to uh, say as well uh you and i have a lot in common uh when it comes to military history 
I am, I am in love with uh, World War II history. Yeah, I'm. Well, I'm really big into more so the German side because uh, half of my family on my side was German anyway. So, the German side of it really fascinates me. And yeah. my, uh, I agree. Was actually uh, an SF officer. Um, well, uh, my grandfather was in World War II, and uh, my dad was in uh, the Korean War, right. and uh, they both were they both were injured uh, during those wars. So that's why I mean I, I just uh, the history just amazes me with uh, with especially with uh, the the uh, World War II and the Korean War. I mean I like I, I mean I don't like war, but I like studying and uh uh about different battles and and, and whatnot uh, well, I'm and blessed to have both british and german grandparents so i had two sets of grandparents fighting yeah so i've always had this obsession with the uh, military and uh, i do have quite a good collection i can't really anything because yeah they, YouTube doesn't like certain things, but uh, I do have, I mean, I, I do have little bits. Um, some of you will probably remember, If I don't know if I can turn the camera around on this. Uh, let's have a look. No, I can't turn the camera around on this, but if I show this, look, a few of you will remember the uh, the Thames boat plaques that we was pulling out. Yes, sir. Well, I've managed to get the collection from 1938 all the way through to 1945. Oh, wow, man. That is so cool. That is the full collection of war years. That's the war years. That is awesome, man. Oh, man. Really I mean, we had yeah. some Thames boat plaques out of there. We, I think I had over 80 total, but a lot of them we did as giveaways. But I just wanted the full collection of the war years. Because a lot of these yeah. boats that these were attached to were used to uh, rescue the British troops from the Norman Yeah, uh, uh, from uh, Dunkirk, right? Uh, that's right, yeah, from Dunkirk. <laughs> uh, I am one of the few, Shannon and I are one of the few that actually have boat plaques from the Thames in America. That's right, that's uh, thanks to thanks to Stuart from Kingfisher and, and, and J Dub for uh, painting it up. We got uh, three boat plaques. Very flexible. They can sell for up to eighty pounds each. Yeah. But I did a lot of miners uh, when we did the peaky uh, giveaways. We a lot of them we we did giveaways hoping to get some uh, to uh, American supporters. But I just personally wanted to keep the war year ones. Uh, yeah, the the war year ones are, are um, amazing to have that. Uh, I actually, or I don't know if it was me or Shannon pulled up. Uh, pulled up a. Uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. Pulled up hand. a uh, a shell, a rifle shell, oh. uh, from a. Uh, uh, oh, that was mine. Thirty-eight. Uh, yeah, that, that was Shannon's from a thirty-eight six, uh, Springfield. Uh, we pulled up a live round, and I got it shiny, as shiny as it can be, and on the. Uh, uh, head stamp is uh, LC43, which is uh, uh, Lake City Ammunitions in Missouri, and it's owned by the military, the U.S. military. And uh, tell Rusty he's a shizer. Tell Rusty he's a one. <laughs> That's got you're a shizer. Glenn. Glenn said you're a shizer. Yeah. I'm not sure what a sizer means. A sizer. Uh, that's German. <laughs> uh, he's always picking on me, he's Glenn. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know he is. Uh, I get my did, uh, 
did I ever show you? Did I ever show you those 1931 uh, uh, hubcaps from the Model A Ford? And funnily enough, I've actually got a couple myself out in the garden. I've got one. Let me show a, you real quick. I've got one from a Ford and one from a Morris. Yeah, beautiful they are. I love them. I got all four of them off the same vehicle. But, but I, I've uh, only got the one for the Ford. Uh, this is off the same vehicle, four different locations, four different times. Really? Four Fishing. different locations? Yeah, same same river, same creek, but uh, it's like within uh, a quarter mile down, you know what I'm saying, spotted down, down the, no, down the I've, river. I've actually had similar to that years ago when I was... Uh, back when I was rusty nuts and just starting out as rusty nuts I went down to Birmingham to fish with Glenn and Marie <coughs> one of the canals and uh, I actually found half of a child's handcuff from the Victorian era now, oh wow we all know uh, Donna Collins from Black Country Canal Rats yes she actually fished the same stretch of water but about three miles down and found the other half wow so I, I ended up sending my half to Donna so that she had a, a full set. Hello, Jared from uh, Flying Arrow and Busby. Busby hi, Adventure. Hi. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you all find those uh, cuffs quite quite frequently, don't you? No, not those. I mean, no, not, not the, ju not not the juvenile the ones. Of children's handcuffs I've ever come across. Yeah, no, not 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 the juvenile ones, but the the uh, the uh, adult ones is what I'm talking about, I guess. Uh, the, ju <laughs> the juvenile ones are they got to be very rare, I would say. Yeah, well, these were Victorian. Yeah, that is that is very very rare. Uh, what they used to transport the kids to the uh, workhouses. Oh my God! That's awful. I got you now. Uh, sort of like uh, uh, Oliver Twist. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. But for me to find half of one, and then Donna to find the other half, three miles down the same stretch of water, is just incredible. That that is that is messed up. You know, it's strange what water will do. <laughs> I mean, it just carries things down. It, that's so true. That. I, I don't I don't understand it. Uh, we found a wagon wheel uh, a couple weeks ago and a, a wagon bol a wagon bolster, which is the underneath part uh, and it dates from uh, 1830 to 1870. Uh, that bridge was made in 1870 so we're thinking along that, that that lines that it was a pro from a wagon wreck yeah. we had a we have a historian up here that uh walks that uh area quite frequently and he says oh yeah he says that had to be from wagon uh, wagon wreck at that point uh and uh you ought to seen us carrying a wagon wheel <laughs> on top of on top of our car, and I'm not talking. I'm not talking about the small wheels. I'm talking about the. We both had to hold on. Talking about the full size wagon wheel. I we actually, had to put it on. We had to put it on top. Little story about uh, Glenn. Glenn will be laughing now because he actually pulled out a solid oak wagon wheel hub once. You know the actual hub, and it was a beautiful yeah, got, wood, and. For some daft reason, I said to him, "You need to put it on your on your fire." So he did, <laughs> oh, and there was nothing left of it. <laughs> oh God! That's a that's a running joke me and Glenn's had for the last few years now. About the time I told him to put his his uh, wagon wheel on the fire, and he did. <laughs> Marie said, uh, what did he tell you to do with it, Peaky? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny. 
Okay, Treasure Coast, you take care. Take care, mate. Uh, but Shannon and I had this wagon wheel on top of the car. On We had to reach through our windows, holding one hand on each side with a wagon wheel, flopping up in the wind because it's, it's you know, kind of yeah, shaky. When, when you get those fines and you don't want to part with them, you'll do anything to get them home. Oh, my gosh. It's terrible, man. We've got so much stuff here now. <laughs> but, you know, we'll take it home and clean it up. Yeah, we'll say, we all we're going to take it home and clean it up. Well, hell, it's two years before we get it cleaned up. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. It, this this hobby is just it's amazing to me. Uh, it is, and there's still some nice people out there. We've still got uh, more people to meet, and uh, there's still a lot more to do for charity and everything. And the history will never die out. It'll always keep coming up. You've just got to be patient and get out there. Yeah, yeah, and. <sighs> Magna fishing is evolving so much uh, with the magnets and the equipment. And I mean, I remember seeing people on when we first started, people were using Harbor Freight magnets and uh, <laughs> the Amazon magnets. I mean, oh, we we, well, that's how we started was with the Amazon magnets. I mean, I'm not I quite sure. Most I started with a, an Amazon magnet. It was a 300 double-sided. It wouldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding now. But I think <laughs> as, far as, as far as magnets go now, I think we've hit the pinnacle with these 360s because nothing compares to them now. Absolutely yeah. nothing. I don't, I don't see... I, if, if there's anything stronger or better than a 360, I don't know if I want to see it. I mean... The 360s are the, beast. The three sisters are like Shannon said, they're beasts. I mean, uh, we love we love the ones we have. I mean, they I've got the uh, mine's called the Titan, it's a 3,800 pound uh, 360, and Shannon uses a 2,400 pound Artemis 360. And uh, you know, and I don't I don't talk about people's magnets, everybody's got their their particular favorites that they they like and uh you know as long as you're cleaning up the water um, the matters. at the end of the day you work with what you've got you work with what you can afford we're all doing yeah. good things because we're all cleaning up the waterways as we go along yeah that's absolutely right the only thing i will say is pick up your garbage take your scrap away yourself and don't leave it for somebody else to pick up if you got a scrap man, that's great. But uh, tell him about my little button Amazon magnet that we. Oh had. yeah, yeah. Shannon, we first started. Shannon had a. Uh, it was that big around. It, it may have been a three hundred pound uh, magnet. It was about like that from yeah. Amazon. But let me tell you what: I've never seen a magnet so small, as strong as that magnet was. I pulled up a fire hydrant top with that. <laughs> well, a lot of us YouTubers from back in the day, we, a lot of us started out with the little 200 clamp magnets, you know, 200 either side. And I found machine guns with mine. I was fortunate enough to be part of the group that discovered the Vickers machine guns over here. Yeah. Um, I, I, I had three Vickers machine guns out with my 200. Uh, I love I love the Vickers. I'm sorry, I, they're they're one of my favorites. Well, uh, fortunately, all three of the ones I found are in museums now. So, well, that's that that's good and that's bad. I mean, uh, you know, it's preserving history, but it's and it's I know the gun laws over there. I know are completely. Quite but to, I mean that was that in itself was just an incredible uh, weekend. Well, it was to, over two weekends. Um, I think a total of twenty eight came out in the end. Wow! <laughs> what, 
the story behind it was that um, they'd all been sent by boat to uh, a, a town called Rotherham in South Yorkshire, which is just up the road from where I live. And uh, they had a compound right next to the water and it was full of all these crates of different guns from World War II that had been sent to be smelted down, to be destroyed. And a lot of the local kids back in the 60s used to climb over into the compound and play war with them. And they they threw loads of the Vickers machine guns into the river and that's how we ended up finding them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But we actually got to meet the the adults now, grown adults, but we actually got to meet the people that threw them in there when they were kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what can you say to that? <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. And uh, now I don't know if you noticed, but I used a couple pictures of you uh, uh, from the Peakies. Oh uh, yes, yeah. the uh, the spaz that was uh, Kirsty's most famous find. That one, the spaz. Yeah, uh, you don't find those, brother. <laughs> I think not, the spaz not, was the not, first one that's ever come out in this country. I would believe that. Uh, I don't think I've. I don't think I've ever seen one come out in this country at all. Well, that. Uh, that particular picture that was taken at what we call we now call Gun Bridge, and that's where we uh, the Peakies had the biggest um, weapons haul ever found in this country. Uh, we've had over sixty firearms from that area now. That's amazing. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do if we found sixty. <laughs> well, we had we had guns going back to the Boer War. Through World War One, World War Two, right up to the modern day uh, Spaz shotgun. Yeah, no, I, um, that was just unbelievable. That that find. Now I'm a big fan of the uh, the Enfield. Oh yes, the uh, Enfield. Uh, I actually had one up until about three years ago. I uh, ended up selling it, but. Uh, I had a working uh, infield from uh, uh, very early 1900s, but it was a working, it was a working one. And brother, let me tell you what you can you can knock the wings off a gnat at 300 yards with that thing. There's so many variations of them as well. I've got a friend of a personal friend of mine who collects Lee Enfields, and he's got over 60 of them. Man. <laughs> yeah, that that is an amazing rifle that uh, gets overlooked. Uh, I think it gets overlooked in in uh, history. Uh, but I mean, snipers still to this day they love the infield. Well, what amazes me is uh, the variation of some of the finds that we've had. I mean, if you look back through some of the Peaky's videos the the variation of weapons finds we've had is it, it just beggars belief i mean glenn glenn pulled out a german panzer well it was a german faust patron which is the rocket yeah. launch, german rocket launcher we've had everything from them to uh german mausers the list is endless it really is unbelievable some of the stuff the variation of different weaponry that we've found I mean, Glenn had the hand cannons, the precursor to to any handgun. He's had two now. He's been fortunate. Yes, yeah, I, I remember that. I, I, I do remember that. Uh, I mean, let's see. The weapons variations that we've had is just unbelievable. When you start thinking back and you you put put it in a list of the the different things that we've had as a group, it, it's unbelievable. It really is. Uh, yeah, it really is. I did. Didn't somebody find a uh, German Luger? Yes, we we had one of those as well. <laughs> I think we've had a couple of those now. I think we've had a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's what I want. That's what I want to to Boy, find. Busby had a. I even had a pistol going back to Gettysburg. 
Wow, really? Yes. It was, uh, I forget the name of it now. It's a really unusual name, but it was um, specifically designed for uh, Gettysburg. It was released for the, the war in Gettysburg. Well, I'm not sure what that would be. Uh, Busby said he had a Mauser with 30 out six bolt action. Nice. Hello, Corey. Corey's Magnet Adventures. Hi, Corey, mate. Right? Got people from all over coming in here today. <laughs> uh, Brilliant. Great. Which is great. Uh, I don't know how you know, to stay on for George, but if you stay on much longer, I need. I'm desperate for the loo. <laughs> oh, brother! I tell you what, uh, we don't normally stay on about an hour and fifteen. Sometimes, well, it just depends. I mean, on on what's going on. Uh, if you need to go, brother, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and call it right here if you want to. Uh, okay, mate. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, we've been on for an hour and 11 minutes, and I think it's been a great, great time. Thank you so very much, Steve. Uh, oh, my I, pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, like I say, you've always supported us. You've supported me. It's good to be able to come on here and support you guys as well, and uh, I just hope everybody out there has enjoyed watching. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure they did, and... Uh, uh, like I said, I can't thank you enough, and Shannon can't thank you enough. Uh, it means the world to us to have you on here, and uh, you're more than welcome to come back at any time, uh, anytime you want. You know. Oh, we will. Do. I'm just sorry to cut it short, but I've had too much of this British tea. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I hear you. <laughs> uh, me, me as well. Uh, but take care of yourself, Steve. Get well. Get better soon. Uh, guys. Uh, we love you. See you guys. And, and uh, we'll talk real soon, okay? We will do, definitely. And to everybody else out there, stay safe, guys. Enjoy your hobby. Do good for the waterways. But like I say, most important, stay safe. Absolutely. Thank you again, Steve. I can't thank you enough. Everybody thank else in the me. chat. Big love to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.